Hey, Isabel, this is unexpected, but could you come over and get your stuff, please? What's going on? Why do I need to suddenly retrieve my belongings? Where are you right now? Are you still at the grocery store? I had a few errands to run in town, but I'll be heading home shortly. Why do I have to come and get all my stuff? I want you to take your belongings and leave our house. I've already taken them outside, so please come and pick them up. Wait, what? You said you finished your errands, right? Now you can come over and get your stuff. I've almost finished bringing everything outside. Please hurry and pick it all up as soon as possible. I don't want your things to be left out there for too long. Please, could you explain why my stuff is outside? I don't understand what's happening. Well, my little sister Jenny and her daughter Amy have been going through some tough times lately. Yes, I know them. Are they okay? Amy is having a hard time adjusting to her new elementary school and making friends. Didn't she just transfer schools recently after Jenny's divorce and move? It's only been about a month, right? I'm sure she'll get used to the new environment and make friends soon. What are you talking about? It's just an elementary school. It shouldn't take that long to make friends. She should be making 10 new friends every day. Do you really think that's how it works? Of course. Kids make friends easily. But Amy hasn't made a single friend yet, and Jenny is getting really worried. So we decided that Amy should transfer to the school where Mary goes. I think they'll get along well. I guess that could be a good idea. I'm happy for you and Jenny, but how does any of this relate to my stuff being left outside? Well, if Amy is going to transfer schools, they need to live closer to us. I suggested they live with me. Without discussing it with me. I can't believe it. It would save them a lot of money to live with me, and we don't have much space. So I want you to leave and take all your belongings with you. This is absurd. It's my house too. You have recently transferred to a new office far away, right? Complaining about the long commute. I thought it might be the perfect chance for you to find a new place closer to work. So you want us to live apart now? Yes, that's precisely what I mean. I suggest you start searching for a new place promptly. Also, if I were you, I'd hurry up and get your belongings. Leaving them outside for too long might attract thieves. This is incredibly thoughtless. Did you even discuss any of this with Mary? She should have a say in it too. No need to discuss it with Mary. I know she'll be overjoyed. Spending time with Amy will make them best friends. This is so insensitive. I never knew you could be so heartless. Whoa, calm down. Don't get so upset just because you can't live with me anymore. Wait, what? No matter how angry or upset you get, it's already been decided that you're leaving, and it can't be changed now. Jenny and Amy are moving in today, so you're no longer welcome here. Got it? My sister has been through a lot, and I want to help her out. I hope you can find a new place soon. Don't worry, I already found a place to live. You did? That was quick. I received the keys yesterday, and I plan to move my stuff tomorrow anyway. Well, that's great. I'm glad you found a place already. I guess you were tired of the long commute to work every day. I'm glad we're on the same page about this. What? You must be joking. Not sure what you mean, but I'm glad everything worked out. Now hurry up and come get your stuff. I don't want your belongings to be outside when Jenny and Amy arrive later today. Let me call my friend to help because I can't do it alone. We'll be there soon. Thank you so much for bringing all my belongings outside. It'll save me a lot of time. I'll be moving out today just as you want. Hi, Isabel. I want to express my apologies for the current situation. Thank you for your kindness. Both Amy and I appreciate that you're moving out so that we can have your room. No need to worry. I had plans to leave regardless of your moving in. Yes, I heard. Your job must be paying you well. Renting a place just for work is something I could never imagine doing. Actually, I'm not renting a new place because of work. I've made this decision because I feel it's time for a change. And I need some distance from you and Ethan. Oh? What brought this on all of a sudden? It seems like Ethan prioritizes you and Amy more than his own wife. And that's been bothering me. So I decided to move out. Isn't that what Ethan and you want? Why do you seem so angry? Is this about what happened the other day? 
Are you upset because I invited Ethan to Amy's birthday party? Seems a bit pathetic, if that's the reason. Please don't dismiss it like that. We had a family picnic planned at the park that day, but you called Ethan and asked him to buy presents for Amy since you had forgotten. I really couldn't understand what you were thinking when you acted like that. It was disappointing. I had no other choice. I don't own a car. And Ethan was the only person available to help. Ethan chose to prioritize buying presents over our family outing and ended up spending nearly $200 on a gift for a young child. He stayed at the party and didn't come back home till the next morning. Mary was very upset. She was looking forward to spending the day together. I understand it was disappointing, but it was just a picnic. Amy's birthday is more important. Seriously? I heard that you still went ahead with the picnic and took a framed picture of Ethan. Sounds like you had a great time. Yes, that was his idea. Claiming it was similar to spending the day as a family. It felt like a joke. I truly am sorry. Raising Amy as a single mother after my divorce has been challenging. You should feel sorry for me too. I can empathize with the difficulties of being a single mother, but some choices led to that situation. Your infidelity played a part which isn't easy to overlook. What? Are you serious? It's the truth. Raising Amy alone might be tough, but it's a consequence of your actions. You also sought custody for child benefits, and it gives the impression that you made questionable choices. How dare you? Just because you're my brother's wife doesn't mean you can speak to me however you want. He is protective of me. I understand that, but Ethan is my husband and our child's father. He has other responsibilities, and I'd appreciate it if you stop relying on him for everything. Shut up, loser. Excuse me? Don't you think Ethan cares about you too much? Of course he cares about me. I'm his sister after all. I'm his number one priority. If that bothers you, maybe you should consider a divorce. Seriously? You mean that? Since you're going to live separately now, Getting a divorce might be best. I can even help with the paperwork. You've got to be kidding me. My brother and I have always been close since we were kids. You're just his wife. Don't try to take him away from me. Anyway, I'm grateful that you left so we could live there. Hey, Isabel, when do you plan on to return home? Excuse me? The laundry and dishes are starting to pile up. Can you please hurry up and come clean this place? Why am I the only one responsible for cleaning? I thought we agreed that I was moving out. Who cares if you moved out or if we're living separately? You're still my wife and you should come home on weekends to help with the housework. It's your responsibility. Are you serious? In an ideal world, I'd want you to stop by after work every day and help out. But I'll settle for weekends. I'm being kind here. You're welcome. You must be joking. We're family, right? We should spend some time together at home on weekends, and you can do the housework when you visit. I'm just speechless. What's wrong? You made me move out of our home so that your sister and her daughter could live there. Now you want me to come home only on weekends to do the housework? Yes, it works out great for all of us. I'll be looking forward to having you over. You're still my wife after all. I expect you to do the housework and that is normal. Well, I'm not your wife anymore, by the way. Why should I do the housework when I don't even live there anymore? I've finally settled into my new place. I'll come over one last time to pick up my daughter, but I won't do any of your housework. Maybe you can ask your sister for help. Wait, what do you mean? You're not my wife anymore? We aren't divorced. Actually, we are divorced. I've already sent in the paperwork. I've had enough of you. What are you talking about? You can't just go and divorce me without me knowing about it. Do you remember Mary, our daughter? She told me that she had been crying every night for the past six months. She kept saying that her dad didn't love her anymore and that she didn't want to live with him anymore. Really? It seems that you never noticed because you were too busy with your sister, barely spending any time at home and constantly with her. Wait a minute. You're saying that you want to get a divorce just because of that? I always told you how much I care for my sister. 
We lost both our parents when we were young, and I'm the only person she can depend on. Yes, I know about all of that, and it's a great thing that you guys have a strong bond. Right? So I don't see what the problem is. The problem is that you've taken it too far. Wait, how? I've told you many times before. I've had enough of you and your sister. I can't stand it anymore. Actually, it was Jenny who suggested the divorce. She even helped me with the whole process. Jenny helped you with the divorce? Yes. She was the one who suggested it and gave me the paperwork with your signature on it. I had no idea it was forged. And you handed those divorce papers in? Yes, I did. Everything went smoothly and we are officially divorced now. No way! You've got to be kidding me. How could you get a divorce without my permission? That's illegal! It wasn't me! If the name was forged, then it was your sister Jenny who did it. You should be angry at her, not me. If it's really illegal, maybe we should involve the police. Just stop. How can you be so cold-hearted? Just because I spent a little time with my sister. You want a divorce? Are you stupid? Not at all. I think you guys are the ones being unreasonable. What did you just say? Fine, let's get divorced. Maybe you'll have some sympathy for Jenny. Once you realize how hard it is to be a single mother, don't come crying to me then. As I told you earlier, we're already divorced. So way ahead of you. Well, I'm going to come over to pick Mary up. Hey, I'm really sorry that our situation led to your divorce. Don't worry about it at all. Getting a divorce was something that I had been considering for quite some time. Yeah, I kind of had a feeling that it was on your mind. Yes, I started contemplating it last year, actually. Wow, that's quite a long time to be thinking about getting a divorce. It gave me ample time to reflect and plan for the future. During that period, I began searching for a new place to live and saved up some money. So I'll be completely fine. Please don't concern yourself with my well-being. You and Ethan live your lives as you wish. Okay. I understand. We'll cherish our time together. I'm glad to hear that. I'm sure you both will find happiness. There's something I forgot to mention. Since you and Ethan are divorced now, could you please refrain from relying on him? I heard you tell him that you don't need any help raising Mary anymore. So please, don't come back to ask for help with her or for her tuition in the future. Rest assured, I don't plan on seeking any assistance. Great to hear that. That means Ethan's entire salary will be available for Amy and me. He listens to everything I say and buys me everything I want. I'm planning to ask him to cover our living expenses and Amy's college tuition down the line. Well, I hope his salary is sufficient for all of that. I believe he earns around $1,000 a month, right? Wait, what? Also, Jenny, you are currently unemployed, right? I'm curious how both of you will manage with just $1,000 a month. And considering the tuition costs, I'm not entirely sure if that amount will be enough. Wait, seriously? Ethan only earns $1,000 a month? Ethan actually got a new job last year, and it was partly for your sake too. Remember how you've been asking for his help regardless of whether it was the weekend or not? Well, he couldn't assist you on weekdays if he kept working at his old company, so he decided to leave to be available when you needed him. The new company he joined offered flexible hours, but due to your frequent requests for help, he barely had time to focus on his work. That's why his income has reduced to around $1,000 a month now. This is unbelievable! I thought Ethan was making much more than that. How could he afford to buy expensive gifts for Amy? And treat me all the time. Given that he didn't have to pay for living expenses, he had the freedom to spend the remaining money as he pleased. What? So you were covering everything else? Yes, I was paying for everything. Our living expenses, rent, and more. Now that we are divorced, I wonder who will be taking care of all of those expenses. I still can't believe it. As I mentioned earlier, I don't intend to seek help in raising Mary or paying for her tuition in the future. I've been taking care of everything for the past few years, so I'll manage just fine on my own. Frankly, it's quite amusing that you would think I would rely on him for anything. Please, wait. 
I was under the impression that Ethan was earning around $4,000 a month. Not even close. Even at his last company, I believe he was making around $3,000 a month there. But now it's just $1,000. Well, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy living together. Hey, Isabel. Let's get remarried and live together again. I finally realized how much you mean to me. What? What are you talking about? Please, just hear me out. Jenny told me she's going to remarry. She said that means she doesn't need me anymore. Actually, she wants nothing to do with me. Well, once she gets married, she might not need you anymore and her husband can take care of her. How could that be possible? I can still take care of her. And on top of everything, she doesn't even want to introduce me to her husband. Can you believe that? She's embarrassed because of how little I earn. She plans to pretend that I don't exist when she starts her life with her new husband. That's a bit sad. I almost feel sorry for you. It is sad. What happened to all the times I helped her? Now she just plans to pretend I don't exist. Isn't that ridiculous? Ridiculous is a good word for it. Thank you. Finally someone who understands how I feel. You really are the person I'm destined to be with. I'm really down because of how Jenny has treated me. But it made me realize something so important. The person I should be giving my attention to is you. So let's get remarried. We can live happily together. Me, you, and Mary. Don't even think about getting back together. We will never, ever get back together again. But it must be so difficult raising our daughter all by yourself. Mary must be sad too, without her father. You both moved from our big house to a small apartment. Don't you want to live comfortably in a big house again? What are you talking about? I mean, I would gladly welcome you both back to the house now. Let's live together and enjoy life as a family. We can go on picnics at the park every week. I don't want to go back to the old place with a mean person. Uh, what? That's what Mary just told me, so I don't think we're going to be moving back. What does she mean by mean person? What lies have you been telling Mary? I haven't been telling her anything. She's been calling you that for the past few months on her own. Guess she probably started calling you that because you seemed more interested in Jenny and Amy. She might have learned the word at school. It's probably the only insult she knows. Why didn't you tell her she's wrong? Why would I do that? I don't think she's wrong at all. In fact, I completely agree with her. Really? That's absurd. Well, whether you accept it or not, that's the truth. You can enjoy life on your own. A mean person? Mary and I are going to live happily together in our new place. Goodbye! After divorcing my ex-husband, he tried very hard to convince me to remarry him. But I was determined not to let that happen. He even brought our daughter into the discussion, hoping she would persuade me. But she didn't need a father like that. After his younger sister married a wealthy man, she cut off all contact with him, even denying him as her brother. This made my ex-husband even sadder and more disappointed. After some time, he regained his spirits and focused on his career, which stabilized, and his salary improved. He pleaded with me to let him meet our daughter, and after careful consideration, I decided to allow him to see her once a month. During these visits, he showed great care, and only focused on playing with our daughter without neglecting her. I know he deeply regrets his past mistakes and is trying to make amends. He also brings gifts for me during these meetings, but I still feel quite hesitant to accept them. I will give myself, our daughter, and even him more time to think about the possibility of remarriage. 